stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of non-stop hey, action. Hey, everybody. So let's go to the have studio Have you had right enough now. of winter yet? Hi, I'm Janine Lauschott, and this is the 1079th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Today, we're going to remind you of what is just around the corner. We're continuing with our effort to digitize and save some classic episodes of Motorsports Unlimited. We felt it was just about time to pick a fun in the sun show and start you thinking about summer. So that's just what we're going to do. Let's go to the studio and see what Bill picked. Motorsports Unlimited. Sit back and relax because today we're taking you to the beach. Of course, this is Motorsports Unlimited, so when we say the beach, we mean a place for launching jet skis and wave runners. It seems one of our lovely ladies of motorsports has a wave runner and knows of a cool beach in Indiana that unofficially caters to personal watercraft. As luck would have it, even though summer is over, we got a beautiful day for fun in the sun, so let's take advantage of it and join Bill and the girls on the southern shore of Lake Michigan and have some fun. the way down in Indiana today because one of our lovely ladies of motorsport, Diana Sleese, uh, happens to live in northern Indiana and she happens to have a couple of jet skis and she said, Bill, one of these days you've got to show the folks the area where I always go jet skiing. So we came down here kind of to surprise her and Chuck, broaden your shot, kind of make a pass up and down the beach and uh, guess what, Luda? Nobody's here. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Very beautiful, very nice place. I like it, the sun and lakes. We are, as a matter of fact, what you're seeing is in fact Lake Michigan. This is a little piece of the beach. I'm going to tell you how we got here because quite honestly, I'm not exactly sure what town this is. But the way we came, and we came from Chicago, and we took the Skyway, and we took it all the way uh, uh, onto the Indiana Toll Road and got off at Dunes Highway. And on uh, the Dunes Highway exit, we took 1220, and uh, we went east on 1220. We have to kind of bear left to stay on 12 because 12 and 20 uh, actually separate. Uh, and you want to stay on 12. We took 12 and continued all the way on Route 12 until we got to Lake Street. There was a McDonald's on the corner, made a left on Lake Street, and took it all the way to here. It dead ends right here on the lake. And I can see, Chuck, if you would, take and pan over to the right, because what we've got right over there is that we do have a, uh, a jet ski uh, on the trailer. And what interests me is, if you will notice, there is the jet ski that's on the trailer. And if you will also notice that there is a trailer right next to the jet ski, which is empty. Now, the question that I have, and Chuck, you can come on back over here, and by the way, that was a two-place jet ski trailer there, so that tells us, Liz, what? That there was probably two jet skis on there before. That tells us that somebody came down here, has two jet skis in the water, but take a look out there. As far as the eye can see, there are no jet skis. Where do these guys go? I don't know. <laughs> do you think they would go that far? Yeah, why not? Well, because, why not? Because I don't know if that's a good idea. Lake Michigan is a huge body of water. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. I'm, I think it's fine. Well, I don't know about this. Chuck, broaden your shot. Take a look here. All of this area, we don't see a jet ski anywhere in sight. Uh, and yet, we've got two empty spaces on trailers here. So somebody's out there with jet skis. So apparently, you can go a long way right from this area. In any event, folks, we tried, Diana, I told you that I would try to show the folks, you know, where you go jet skiing. This is a pretty cool place, Chuck. I don't know if you can see it in your shot. Uh, it's all uh, wide open beach here and everything. And it's obvious that a lot of people uh, come down here to do jet skiing, just not today, because I've got to tell you right now, it's what, October something? Something. What are we, October? October 9th, 10th. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're yeah. into October already, so it's, it's already pretty cold here, so uh, we just got lucky and got a real nice day. So in any event, this is a place apparently where you can go jet skiing. I'm not exactly how you, sure how you do it. If I found somebody here that uh, could give us an explanation, I would do it. We'll hang around for a little, few more minutes and see if we can find somebody to tell us how to, where you launch and all that sort of thing. But pretty nice area down here, and uh, we're going to do some more things, so don't go away. We're coming right back. Somebody come with a jet ski. <laughs> Well, 
we found one. Believe it or not, we found a jet skier here. It was starting to look a little grim. We've waited for about 20 minutes or so, but we got a guy that's going in, and you are. Paul Vanderbilt. Where are you from, Paul? Oak Park, Oak, Oak Forest, Illinois. Okay, so you're not an Indiana guy? No. So you can't exactly help us on exactly where we are? Uh, not exactly, no. Okay, because we, you said you know this to be called Miller Beach? This is Miller Beach, yeah. All right, and there is a town called Miller? Yeah. Okay, so this may be Miller. Yeah. And it may also be Lake Station. Right. Okay, we're not really sure, folks. This is a little bit east of Gary, Indiana, am I right? Right. Okay, first, before we go any further, tell us about your jet ski. Uh, and, and I keep saying jet ski, and let me uh, back up just a little bit. These are technically called personal watercraft. The stand-up varieties have come to be called generically jet skis. The sit-down ones have generically been called wave runners, except right. jet ski is a Kawasaki trade name, wave runner is a Yamaha trade name. So it's a personal watercraft, and this one is more of a wave runner, but it's not a wave runner. Does that make sense? Right. I don't know. <laughs> this is a 92 Sea Doo XP. Uh, made by Bombardier. Right. Okay, the snowmobile company. Right. Okay, how big of an engine? Uh, 720 cc's. So that ought to be enough smoke to go. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it gets, it gets up and goes. How often do you go out? Uh, every weekend in the summer, if possible. Always come down here? Yeah. Where is everybody? Uh, it's the end of the season, so uh, maybe people are going to come out later on today yet. You think people still might show up? Yeah, it's too good a day for not it's to beautiful. show up. Right. It's beautiful. Okay, question we have. Chuck, broaden your shot. I don't see really any place to launch the jet skis, and there are signs. There's, oh, I guess they're down there. There's some signs over there that say that you can't drive out onto the beach. So how do you get the jet skis in the water? Uh, you're standing on the boat launch. In the summer, they dig this out with a bulldozer. Are you serious? Yeah. So literally just a few weeks ago, this was dug out? Right. This and then they fill it? All the way into the lake. It, no, the lake fills itself. lake fills it up. So they have to what, keep constantly opening it? Yeah, they maintain it all week long. Oh, I see. Lou, do you understand what he's saying on this? No, nothing. Okay, right <laughs> now, right here, this is that, oh, I see. As a matter of fact, Chuck, if you broaden your shot and tilt down, that's actually the paved area is, oh, I see, is actually a ramp, and the sand apparently has piled up on top of the ramp. Is that it? Correct, yeah. Ah, okay, and how long ago were you here and it was still a, it was still a launch? Uh, Memorial Day. That wasn't that long ago? No. Boy, it fills in quickly. Very. So what are you going to do today? How are you going to launch it today? <laughs> I'm going to back into the lake off of the beach. And you're not afraid of getting stuck? No. Okay, well you got four-wheel drive. Right. Yeah, Chuck brought in your shot. Uh, he's actually came uh, really well equipped for this today. And how far out? The, the other question we were speculating on before when we first pulled up here is that there's a couple of jet ski trailers here without the jet ski, so obviously people are out there. And I'm going to tell you something, as far as the eye can see, and I think we can see pretty far today, it's real clear, I don't see any jet How far do these guys go? Uh, they can go as far as they want as long as they have fuel. And how far do you normally go when you come down here? I normally go from the next beach over and stay here. The next beach over is West Beach. Okay, Chuck, broaden your shot. Just kind of swing down that way. I want to explain to the audience. You don't have a good camera angle there for it, but I can say because I walked up kind of to the peak of that dune a little bit and I looked, and there actually is another little beach area like this down there, and there are people actually swimming down there in that one. Right. And so that's called West Beach there? Right. And the, going the other way, where do you go to the... And Chuck, if you would, take your camera shot back to the other way then, as soon as you get done over there. Uh, go back the other way. It appears to be some kind of a breakwater down there. Yeah, and I don't go much past that. Okay, so you sort of contain yourself here, but obviously right. there are guys that go a lot further. Right. Lake Michigan's a pretty treacherous body of water. I don't know whether that's such a great idea or not. No, I don't uh, get too far out. Okay, another thing I want to mention is I had the experience this uh, past year uh, where actually took, I've got a 19-foot cutty cabin boat and I normally don't go to Lake Michigan. I would go to like the Illinois River or Chain of Lakes or something like that. And I had the opportunity to go over to New Buffalo and I found Lake Michigan to be a totally, this does not look like the same Lake Michigan that we have in Chicago. And I found in New Buffalo the water was at least 10 or 15 degrees warmer. You could see 20 feet down to the bottom. It was clear as a bell and this seems to be the same way. Yeah, it's real nice around here. Yeah, the water is warmer than we have in Chicago? I'm uh, not exactly sure if it's warmer, but it's it's been as warm as it's been in a long time here. Okay, so it was nice all summer. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to let... Yes, we, you, have, you have a question? <laughs> There's not a question, it's idea. I help him push these jet skis if he will give me driver, driving. Excuse me, what do you want to do? <laughs> I need driving. <laughs> She's looking for a ride. It's we cold out there. Could do that. You can do that? Folks, we'll talk about this off camera. Luda, don't do this to me on camera. We'll, we'll, we'll stop it. We'll talk. You ready to go out there? Yeah. I don't believe it. It's cold. We'll talk about this off camera. Thanks for spending a little time with us. We may just rope him in here. Uh, folks, don't go away. I'm not sure what we're going to do next, but I have a feeling I've got an idea. Leave it to Luda to try to get someone to let her drive. 
first Paul had to launch. In the meantime, Luda and Liz get ready. It's starting to heat up down here a little bit. We've got more folks arriving, and you had a question. And by the way, what we're waiting for right now, the fellows over here are having a little bit of a mechanical problem getting it started, so we're waiting because you, you talked them into a ride, right? Yes. Okay, and you guys are all ready? You're all in costume ready for riding? Okay, you ask a question. Um, I was asking the difference between the jet ski and the, J and the wave runner. Okay, very quickly, I want to explain this. First of all, we're using bad names, but it's become part of the language. We are saying jet skis. Jet ski is a brand name for Kawasaki, but there were lots of people that manufactured these stand-up kind of wave runners, but we call them all jet skis. It's a misnomer. But for the purposes of general discussion, when people say jet ski, they're talking about the stand-up kind. And it takes a real athlete to do jet skiing. It really does. It's hard on the legs and all that stuff. And it takes some uh, level of skill to actually ride a jet ski. The wave runners are the sit-down kind. They're like a snowmobile on water, but Wave Runner is a Yamaha brand name. So it's really wrong to call, for example, this fellow's got a, a Sea-Doo. That's not a Wave Runner because it's not a Yamaha. Sea-Doo is a different company. So calling it a Wave Runner is really wrong because Wave Runner is, yeah, but it's become part of the language that we call all the sit-down ones Wave Runners and all the stand-up ones jet skis. And together, they're all called personal watercraft. Now, am I making any sense? So what we're talking about is, is the Wave Runner style is the sit-down or the snowmobile style, which anybody can do and it's very easy and the stand-up kind is the jet ski kind okay that answers it yeah <laughs> okay we're gonna hang around here a little bit because it's starting to heat up a little bit and uh, who knows uh, they're ready for some water right now uh, maybe we're gonna have a little fun here today remember earlier when Bill was wondering out loud about where the jet skiers were that had their empty trailers parked in the parking lot watch <laughs> Well, guess what? We speculated earlier about the empty jet ski trailers that we saw uh, in the parking area. And yet we showed you Lake Michigan and there wasn't a jet ski or a boat or anything as far as the eye could see. And it's a clear day. We can see pretty far. And I'm saying to myself, they can't possibly go that far on the jet skis, can they? Well, guess what? They can go that far. What are you doing? <laughs> My slippers got wet. <laughs> <laughs> we are near water, folks, yes. Guess what? The guys that own those vehicles with the empty trailers happen to be here. They just pulled in and you are? James Dragon. From? From uh, Griffith, Indiana. And? Eric Surdy from Griffith. Okay guys, what were you doing? Oh, it's not last nice day, so we figured we'd go for a ride out to Michigan City and come back. Yeah. How far is Michigan City from here? It's around 22, 23 miles, depending on if you stay close to the shore or not. You gotta be beat. Eh, a little bit. We got a couple rests. We got pulled over by the Coast Guard about uh, 20 minutes ago. For what? Uh, we were riding somewhere we shouldn't have been. Uh, is it posted? We didn't see it. They said it was. Okay, but there are areas you're not supposed to ride? Yeah, it was over by the steel mills down there, down right past uh, Burns Ditch. Give us an idea. What's the pleasure and fun? Everybody step forward a little bit because when the host feet start getting wet, it's time to move out of the water. Uh, give us an idea. What's the fun of coming down to this particular area to go jet skiing? And I'm saying jet skiing, we've explained earlier, we're talking about a brand name there. We mean personal watercraft and all that. Go ahead. Just getting away from everything. Getting, uh, getting out in the open. And typically, how far do you go here? I think, tend to think of jet skis and wave runners as something that you kind of play around with in a specific area in front of a beach. You guys are doing some traveling. It all depends how extreme you want to get. Could you go to Chicago from this beach? Yes. We've been there. You've done it? Yeah. yeah. How long does it take you? Around 45 minutes. Honking, though. Yeah, oh, that's wide open. Okay, first of all, Chuck, take a look at the, uh, and I, I'm going to say Wave Runner again. Luda, you're probably blocking the shot, so maybe step right on over here. And tell us about yours. Uh, it's a Yamaha GP1200. It's basically stock. I got a couple of modifications on it. Uh, other than that, it's a two-seater, 135 horse. That's one of the baddest boys around. We've done a couple of shows with the uh, 1200 Yamaha. They fly. Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a nice boat. I like it. Out of all the ones I've rode, it's the only one I'd buy. Okay, what have you got? I got the XP Limited. And guys, we got to pull out of the water. I, why is it, is the beach tide coming in yeah. or something? <laughs> Come on, is the tide, seriously? Yeah, the tide comes in and out. Does it really? A couple inches, not much, but you can notice it. Tell us about the Sea-Doo. Uh, it's a uh, XP Limited, uh, little stuff done to it, uh, prop, uh, milled the head, uh, bring the compression up a little bit. 
How is it speed wise compared to the Yamaha? It's it's right there. It's you guys are together? Neck and neck. Neck and neck, really? Depends who gets the jump. Okay guys, uh, how much longer are you going to be doing it? Because one, the, one of these days we're going to have time to do it. We're going to do a whole thing about the wetsuits and all that. Because we've got little kids out here running into the water and the water feels really cold to me. Apparently the wetsuits can I really... I out there. Seriously? Seriously. Hot. So the wetsuits can... Uh, wetsuits and dry suits, I guess. Wets, wetsuits can really extend the season? Oh yes. Definitely. Couple, by a month at least. By a month at least? Yeah, definitely. At least normal people, they quit riding when the beach closed. We'll be out here if it's nice next weekend. We rode in November before. Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, this is, Chuck, take your shot over there. We've got a gorgeous boat sitting out there. This is a very, very pretty area here. I'm glad that we came down here to take a look at this. And if I, if I have it right, am I looking? Now, that we've got the breakwater right here. But looking further out there, that next, Chicago. is that Chicago? Yeah. Chicago. Wow, Chuck, see all the skyscrapers. Chuck, if you can, show the audience. We're not talking about this first breakwater that's real obvious. We're talking about behind that. It's in the haze, but you say that is Chicago. That's the skyline. To the right, that is Chicago. That, you can do that in about 45 minutes. Uh, we made it to 79th Street Beach in 45 minutes. Well, I'll tell you something very cool. I want to thank you guys for spending a little time with us. Chuck, you can come on back down here now. Uh, he's just giving me a warning that we're at the end of this tape, so we've got to wrap it up here. Uh, we're looking for rides for these girls. What do you think? Can you give them a ride or no? Definitely. What do you think? If they can stay in the water. What do you guys think? Sure. Huh? Luda, you were the one that was big mouthing it. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, folks, we'll see. We'll talk about it off camera. Yes, 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 I want to ride, but I really want to drive. Well, they're actually going to do it. You're going to go for a ride? Yes. You guys are going to be careful now, right? And go real easy? Of course. Okay, promise? Always. Okay, go ahead. we got to put the life vests on them first, and apparently you guys carry these all the time? Yes. Extras just in case you find girls. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically, okay. Give them a hand. Of course, that is the law. You do have to have a, uh, a life uh, yes. preserver of some kind. Yes, for everybody. And it's also, also, also a good idea. What? I feel fat. Well, you're not fat. Trust me, you're not fat at all. <laughs> okay, we're all set. Luda, you're all set? Everybody's all set. And what are you guys going to do now? You're going to walk them out there a little bit? Yeah, and we have to walk out past the sandbar, and then uh, we can get on. Okay, just give it us give us about a minute and a half or so and bring them back in if you would please. Okay, okay. guys, thanks a bunch, girls. Go See with the guys. <laughs> it's necessary to walk the craft out to deeper water before riding. I think they're ready now. Gee, this looks like fun. Hi, I'm Mei Chin. We have to talk Bill into doing more shows like this. Luda, did you help? Cool. 
cold. You have fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's been a hot day. You liked it too? Yeah. And you're not cold? No. No. That's because you have long sleeve bathing suits on. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, this that makes it worse because it's wet now and that's gonna no, make it No, no, because because I have uh, clothes with me very hot boys. Yes, but what are these guys doing? They're, they're, they took poor uh, Liz and bounced her all over the place. <laughs> yeah. You enjoyed that? Yeah, actually. First time? Yeah. First time? You've you never been on one before? No. Oh, Who okay. did her? I thought you were going to take her and throw her off. No, I couldn't do that. I'd never throw a girl off. No, I agree completely. Listen, I'm, you guys are terrific sports. Are you going to be around for a while or are you going to be taking yeah, off? Yeah, we'll be. Until I run out of gas, I'll be riding. Okay, uh, stick around a little bit. I might have a little bit of a plan later if you guys want to want to help us out, oh, okay? Good. Right now, we want to get them dried off. But you had fun? Yes, I like it. You like it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let well, them drive in myself. Well, I was going to talk to these guys about it. Just, <laughs> folks, we'll talk about it off camera. Stop doing that. We'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> Udo always wants to drive something. Hi, I'm Nikki Castellanos, and before we go any further, let's meet all the girls on today's program. Hi, I'm Liz Cozy. And I'm Luda K. Thank you, girls. And by the way, I'm Dawn Caberlin. Now, let's get back to the beach and meet a couple of families jet skiing. Well, just in case you think it's just young guys looking for girls just this is not just young guys looking for girls down here we've got families that participate and apparently participate down here every single weekend and you are mark marconi from piatone illinois and sandy marconi piatone illinois and brian betnardi from piatone illinois and john betnardi from piatone illinois you're related <laughs> okay and you are julie betnardi from piatone illinois and dana dana Mar dana marconi from piatone illinois and Julia Marconi from Piatone, Illinois. Okay, before we go any farther, I've got one very, very important question. I notice you kids run right out into the water, no problem at all, because you've got these wetsuits on. Do they really make that much difference? Is it that much difference in warm? Yeah. It, it, it make. Yep. It like gets you. It like warms you up everywhere except for or, like on your legs. So when you get splashed, you don't get all cold and stuff. You can definitely feel the difference. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, you could. You could definitely feel the difference because when when you um go in the water, it doesn't it doesn't you don't get cold. And you like it? It's okay because it's not that the water is cold today, but you're okay with it. Yeah. Now, do you know how to ride the jet skis? Not yet. Yeah. But my sister does, and last night was my birthday. Well, how old are you? Six. Well, happy birthday, honey! I've got a job for you when we close this interview in honor of your birthday. So don't run away. Uh, you know how to ride the jet skis? Yeah. Boy, this I seems. I have to ride the stand up. The, the stand up one you can do? Yeah. Get the camera to us. Seriously? Yeah. Wow, now we've got a little bit of a thing here. We talked earlier about the stand up kind, which we generically call jet skis, even though they are other brands. And the sit down ones we generically call wave runners, even though there are a variety of brands and those are brand names. The stand up ones takes a real athlete. It is a real workout. I watched you out there. You're good at this. Not really. I'm not really that good. You said that you bought the uh, stand-up uh, jet ski in place of a Nordic machine. That was supposed to be my Nordic track, but we I think, I, I think a heck of a good, this is a lot more fun than standing in your basement. Oh, way yeah. better, way better. But not just that, I saw your wife, you also jumped right out there. The, trust me folks, the stand-up ones are difficult. This takes a real athlete and it also takes it's a high degree of difficulty learning how to stand up. You jumped right up uh, on the stand-up one. Well, I've been doing it for about a year. How long did it take you to learn? A um, couple days. It did it, balance, yeah, especially with the waves. But the sit-down ones anybody can do, right? Pretty much so, yeah. Because we've got a couple of our girls here that are going to get lessons in a little while from these fellows who are over here. They're going to show them how to, on the sit-down, what do you think, are they going to be able to do it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably so. Liz, first time for you ever on these things, you think you're going to be able to drive one too? Yeah. Yeah, you're looking forward to it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how often we come down here? How often do you come down here? This is my first time at this beach. Okay, so I'm you're... all the other dunes with the, the kids. So oh, this is new to me. Back too. up just a little bit, Lewis, so I can get over here. Go ahead. This is new to me, this jet ski. Oh, what do you normally do? First day. This is my first day on a jet ski. I've never been on a jet ski. What are you always on? Sit downs? No. Nope. Jet skis. Just nothing. I on all of them. This is his first time out. We took him out with us today. He's oh, you've kids. never done this before? No. Well, oh, you got the whole outfits and everything? Yeah. That's, they're, they're his. Mine. They're mine. Oh, so you're bringing, so this is all new to you guys, yeah, like in this circle? We're neighbors. 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 They go Good friends, together. yeah. They go well, what do, you, what do you think so far? I love it. The two guys, you're not going to believe it, the two guys that we just interviewed here, the two young guys we just interviewed, just came back from Michigan City on the jet, that's like 25 miles away. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And 
I don't know if you guys probably know it, right there is City of Chicago. You can see it through the haze there. They said they've gone to the City of Chicago and back. It takes about 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. Full, you know all this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've done it? No, I've never done it. I'm not, I'm not going to go that far. Too many kids with us. Well, you're exactly right. It looks like you did this whole thing as a family thing. This, this is our weekend out. Well, I'm gonna Every tell you. Weekend. I'm gonna tell you something. I am so glad we've just. Little, this is a nice place, huh? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Now, where's the little one whose birthday? What's her name? Dana. Dana. Dana, I got a job for you. Can you handle it? Yeah. Oh, I know you can. I know you can. I want you to step over here, just like this, so we can see the water behind you. I want you to look at our camera. You see our camera over there? And I want you to say. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. I'm thinking I'm going to get to drive. Well, Luda, you certainly can talk yourself into everything. These poor guys now are going to teach you guys how to ride, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to say jet skis. We don't mean jet skis, and I'm going to say wave runners. We don't mean wave runners. We mean sit-down personal watercraft, which is technically what they are, but we're going to say wave runners, even though I don't think either one of them is a wave runner. No, they aren't. No, because we got a Skidoo and a, a Yamaha. Oh, wait, Actually, yours would be a wave runner. Is a wave runner. This one, Chuck, show the audience. We can finally do it technically correct. That one on is a wave runner. I used to say it on the side, but I took all the stickers off. What a surprise. Young guy modified his, uh, his uh, ride. In, in any event, you guys are going to give a little instruction on what they have to do. The first thing I want to do is get my two cents worth in here, because one thing that you have to know about any of these kind of devices is these are jet drives. And just like jet drive boats, all of these things, if you don't give it any power, you can't steer. And it's something you have to get used to. It's a peculiarity of the jet drive. The way the jet drive works is these things don't have any propellers underneath them. What you have is a water intake in the bottom, a pump that draws the water in. There's impellers inside the pump that spray it out the back, very much like a fireman's hose. And it goes forward. For every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. The reason it goes forward is because you're spraying out so much weight and so much velocity of water backwards, the vehicle goes the other way. But if you let off on the throttle and turn, you're not going to steer, are you? No, you're not. This takes a little time to get used to, doesn't it? Uh, not really. It's you're kinda, used to it. It's kind of common sense. Well, these guys are real good, by the way. they got a reputation here. Some of the other people were talking about them. Apparently, you guys are real stunt people out here. Well, I guess you could say that. Yeah. Can you do the submarine dives and all that? I feel there's some waves out here. You can? Yeah. Okay, we're not going to do that today, though, with the girls, right? No, not with the girls. No, no, no. Okay, in any event, I just want people to understand not to be surprised when you get on a vehicle like this because it's a jet drive. Jet boats are the same way. It takes people time to learn to maneuver them. Uh, it's a little disconcerting. Those of us who are used to either outboards or IOs, uh, it has a very definite feel when you turn the steering wheel. Even at idle, it steers. These at idle, they don't steer. No, they don't steer. Actually, at idle, they do. As long as the motor's running, it'll steer. Okay, but it's not much. If you're going slow, it'll, you don't have to give it, I guess. You can go in circles, you can go wherever you want. But if you're, say you're going, you know, half throttle, so you let off the, let off the throttle and try to steer, you're not going to go anywhere. Okay, so the idea is, and, and again, one of the problems with this, maybe you're coming in on a pier, we don't have any piers here, you're coming in on a pier, and you make the turn, and now you listen to what Bill Wilt said, and you give it a little throttle, and you ram the pier. Don't do that either, folks. You have to take time to get used to it, am I right? Yes. Yeah, you need to take time to use it. Now, I'm not going to walk into water, so as I understand it, you're going to take the mic and take the girls out there. Try to remember, I'm not going to be there to coach you, that you've got to let the camera in on what's going on. Give the girls a little explanation of what they're going to be doing, and uh, then bring the mic back to me, and we'll get going, okay? All right, sounds good. Okay, don't forget, you got to use the mic. Girls, Miller Beach looks like a very cool place. I'm going to check it out this summer. Okay, basically the first thing you got to know when you're riding a wave runner is you've got your, uh, your lantern. This is your tether that you always put on your wrist. Now, if you don't have this on your wrist and say you're flying, you know, you hit a wave or something, you're going 40 miles an hour and you fall off, well, the j jet ski is going to keep running and eventually go wherever it wants to until it runs out of gas or until somebody picks it up. So by having this on your wrist, when you fall off, the clip pops off and it kills the engine. That's one thing you always have to remember when you get on is always put that on your left wrist. Uh, as far as that, you have your throttle on the right, kind of like a car. You've got your start button, a stop button. You've got your gauges. It tells you how fast you're going, how much gas you have, le the level of oil. And other than that, it's pretty simple. Just hold on and give it gas. That's it? That's it. Okay. You guys ready to try it? Ready. You ready to try it? Gas? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm ready. <laughs> what do you think?
What do you think? Are they ready? I don't see why not. We, I think we should probably, what do you think? Should we do them one at a time? Yeah, probably that'd be better. Probably, I think that'd be well, a little bit put, better. You can put them both on one. No, 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 let's, let's let one at a time. I'll tell you what we're going to do, folks. I think we're going to do it one at a time. We're going to discuss this, and then we'll be right back, and you'll see what us geniuses have come up with. They decide to do it one at a time, starting with Liz. All right, Eric, what's he telling her? Uh, it's probably just telling her you got to get far enough, uh, deep enough into the water before you can uh, take up so you don't uh, suck all the sand up through the uh, pump. Right, that water inlet I talked about before, one of the disadvantages, you got to make sure you don't take uh, bad stuff in there. Right, you will suck the sand up and it will run it through the engine, causing a lot of wear. What do you think, is she going to be able to do this? I think so, it's pretty easy. Luda, what do you think? She gonna be able to do this? Yeah, she's a very smart girl. Yeah, well, this guy seems pretty heads up too. Both these guys are heads up. They know what they're doing. I think they'll give him good instruction. And it looks like he's actually got the engine running. What do you think? Yeah, they're just starting up now. <laughs> she's good. What? She's see, actually, she's doing. I don't worry. She's nice. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, it's first time. I don't know if I could do this or not, but I'd love to try. Not as easy as it looked when you guys did it. Uh, not that easy. But what, I think I hear her screaming, is that her? I think it's the beep, I think she's running out of fuel. <laughs> she try something? <laughs> uh, between the two of these, which one is easier to ride? Um. The 1200 Yamaha is probably a little bit more stable for a beginner. As to where the XP is more, uh, a little bit more top heavy, you have to have a lot more balance. What is that beeping? That's the low fuel light. <laughs> ah, we're, you guys are out of fuel? Yeah, we've been riding all day. Michigan City and back, yeah. Yes. Oh, they got a low fuel light. That's a real good idea because that's one thing. These things do use fuel. Yes, sir. Yes, they do. You can run through an easy 14 gallons a day. No problem about it. Big two strokes like big snowmobiles. Boy, you put the hammer down and they inhale fuel big time. Now let's see if we can get her to come on back in here see how she did. Luda, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Luda was dying to try it. Let's see how she does. While Luda is getting her instruction out there, we've just got Liz in here. What do you think, Liz? Awesome. <laughs> was it fun? Yeah, kind of A little of hard. harder than when they were doing it though, huh? Yeah, kind of hard to turn. I almost ended up on the beach. Because you didn't give a gas. I gave it you gas. Turned just the, turned the wheel and you let go. No, I was holding it, right? I was no, doing you it right. let go. I was doing it right. I held it, <laughs> it just wouldn't turn, okay? <laughs> Eric, what was she doing? Oh, here goes Luda. What's she doing? Uh, she might have been more afraid of the turn and uh, where she was steering towards. Now, it looks like Luda's getting it down. Now, Luda's from Russia. She's only been here four years now. This has got to be a totally new experience for her. She has never seen these kind of things, and I hope everybody else is watching out for her. She's doing all right, huh? Yeah, she's doing What? Really, I was going full speed. She's going really slow. Why were you going full speed? Because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 1200 Yamaha, that's a handful for anybody. Yes, it is. And although you could say you got yours matching the performance. Yes, I am. I'm probably about two, uh, 200 cc behind him. Yeah, I was going to say you're considerably down in displacement, yet you've got an equal performance with modifications. Yes, I only have about 951 cc out of a two cylinder when he's got about 1200 cc with a three cylinder. You got to be at a big disadvantage. Oh yes. Well, I don't know. It looks like she's doing it out there. I think yeah. she's having what? problems training too. Well, because I, I know that you guys don't believe me, but I'm telling you, you're doing it. Both of you are doing it. You're starting to make your turn. You're letting go of the no, throttle and I it won't turn. I I remembered. I held down and just. I don't okay. Know. I was doing something. <laughs> okay. I held down but the gas. but you do have to squirt that gas to turn it. Yes, you do. I wonder if we're going to be able to get her back. One thing I do want people to know about these things, with the sit-down kind, the stand-up ones are different, but with the sit-down kind, anybody can do it. Yes, anyone. Yeah, maybe not at the level you guys do it. I saw, watched you guys playing out there before, but anybody can do it as a recreational thing, I think. Yes, it's an easy sport. It's a great sport, yes? So there she goes. Yeah, the one thing that I like about all of these personal watercraft and all that is, to me, it brings boating within reach of the average guy. You don't have to have some huge facility to park it, some storage, you can kind of lay it next to your garage in the winter if you want to, you know? Yes. So I think it brings more people into boating. I think that's a good thing. Yes, it's a lot cheaper than getting uh, the bigger boats. You get the whole family involved. I think you're exactly right. Now let's see if we can get her in here and uh, see what her uh, impression is. I can see she's got a big smile. I don't know if uh, Chuck's in tight on her, but she's certainly got a big smile here.
I think she's happy. He's not happy. He was probably hurting that little fuel light, that little fuel buzzer, huh? Yeah, that means he's done for today. No more fuel with you? No, nah, not with us. We have a gas station about a mile away. We can pull out and fill up. Luda? It's you... so cool. I'm your second time. Please. No, 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 no. <laughs> you talk yourself in this. Don't you hear? Do you hear the beep, 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 beep? Yeah. You know what this is? No. Go ahead and tell her. That was low fuel. It means he's almost out of gas. He told me. I'm joking. <laughs> okay. No. Anyhow, did you have fun? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Liz, first, to face the camera. First time, did you have fun? I loved it. You loved it? <laughs> loved it. No, I'm telling you something. I have an idea. This is guys every Sunday here. Maybe yeah. every Sunday coming. <laughs> <laughs> Luda, don't do this to me on camera. We'll talk off camera. Anyhow, guys, thanks a lot. You're great no sports. We appreciate it. We hope we help the folks learn how to do this. And I hope we prove one thing. Anybody can do this. I don't know what you're waiting for. What a great place. And by the way, it's not just for jet skiing. There was plenty of sailing activity too. This is not exactly motors, but it's my show and I like sailing too, so we're gonna do a little piece here with a sailboat because I noticed that, yes, I've seen jet skis and wave runners being launched here all day, but I've also seen a number of sailboats. First of all, you are? Richard Ehrenfeld. And where are you from? Hobart, Indiana. Tell us about your boat. Uh, it's an 18-foot Hobie Cat. And what, is, and what does that mean? Uh, it's a catamaran, has two pontoons, uh, two sails, and it's very light and very quick. One of the fastest sailing boats in the water. Okay, and how often do you come down here? Uh, every time I can. I've been out here about 20 times this summer so far. Okay, Luda, we have a problem here, though. What problem? Feel the wind. Where's it coming from? It's the wind. Yeah, where is it coming from? I don't know. Feel. Where's it coming from? Yeah, what? It's coming in towards the beach. Yeah, well, how the heck is he going to go that way? I don't know, but I know he can do it. <laughs> how are you going to go that way? The wind is blowing at us. <laughs> well, sailboats can't sail into the wind, which is coming from that direction right now but I can sail that way and this way right back in. Okay, it's called tacking, and yes, he's exactly right. In order to go that way, he's gonna have to go this way, this way, and this way. Have I got it right? Correct. Okay, I've gotta ask you a question. When are you getting a motor? Uh, uh, never. Okay, why do you like the sailing, and I want you to make a good case for sailing, because believe me, you got a willing person here. I like it. Uh, this boat's personally been 16-foot waves in this beach, through the breakers. 16-footers? Yes, sir, this boat, me and myself. I've been out in fog in this boat, never got lost. I've been off 12 miles offshore, uh, sailed to Chicago in this boat. It's 26 miles from here to Chicago. You sailed all the way over there? Yeah. And How long did it take you? Uh, that, well, there it took me four hours. Coming back took me six hours. The wind died. You're getting attacked by yeah, the sail. You're getting attacked by the sail? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I like you. <laughs> okay, with me, the thing I like about boating is I love water skiing and tubing and all this, and obviously you need power for that. Great. What do you like about this? Uh, it's. The way they describe this is a boat with bags of power, and it really does. I've had four people on this boat and be, be towing somebody back on a life raft behind this thing and still have one hull out of the water. When you sail these boats, you can sail them with one hull out of the water at an angle, and you go really fast. I've, I've come in so fast to beach on one hull, I've taken this boat all the way in like two lengths off the beach and landed it. So I would have thought you were going to say it's relaxing and it's leisurely and all that. And no. you're talking the same way as the motor guys. No, no, it's I, fast. It's fast. I've actually had this thing leaving over waves. Is that, seriously? Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you something, folks. Chuck, broaden your shot. Pan down here just a little bit. You can see that the beach down here is really heating up now. This, And you come out here real often. Yeah, I've, I'm like one of the beach owners. I've been coming here since I was like one month old. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful facility down here. And again, it falls right along in the lines of the things we try to do on Motorsports Unlimited is we want to show you all the ways there are to enjoy, in our case, of course, motorsport devices. But if you want to sail, this is another. And these facilities are all, it's, you know, it's amazing. People live in Chicago sometimes, and the only thing they think there is is buildings and streets, and it's not true. And they spend so much money to go down to Bahamas or Florida. And it's here. And it's here. This was rated one of the best beaches in Chicago by uh, uh, Chicago Magazine about two years ago. And I understand we're in Gary, Indiana. Yes. Yes, it's called Miller, the area, but he says it's part of Gary. Yes, yeah, correct. And we did find that out from one of the policemen, folks, that this, in fact, is Gary, Indiana. This is the Miller area. This is the southernmost part of Lake Michigan. And this is the southernmost tip of Lake Michigan. Have a good day out there today. Thanks for spending some time with us. Folks, take a look. I'll tell you one thing about sailboats is they are beautiful. Very beautiful, but we need to get back to the matters. Well, who would have thought in the middle of October that we'd had such a great time down here on Lake Michigan? This is really turned out to be a nice day, huh? Very nice day. Really, and you are? 
Tim Murray. Where are you from, Tim? Uh, Valparaiso, Indiana. Okay, we're going to talk to you about your wave runner in just a minute, but I want to show the folks something else. Chuck, try to follow me here for a minute. If you can, take your camera shot way out there. There's a guy with a green one that's kind of doing tricks and stuff out there. Can you see that at all? Have you got him? Way out there, okay? Now pull your shot back and swing over here, and I want to show you what's going on. This way over here, Chuck. I know, I'm making you crazy. What we've got, keep going all the way around. Keep going, I know it's hard, keep going. What we've got is the guy is out playing on his wave runner and the entire family is sitting up here on the beach. You give us a wave, it's all right. Don't you guys get to ride? It's too cold. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about the too cold stuff with the guy here with the wetsuit right now, because as I understand it, it's not cold when you've got a wetsuit on. And I am starting to get more and more convinced that these wetsuits can really, really extend the season. Uh, first, tell us about your uh, Wave Runner. And, it's, and again, we're saying Wave Runner. It's not a Wave Runner, this is Sea-Doo. It's another manufacturer, but we mean sit down personal watercraft, right? Sure. Yeah, it's a 96 XP Sea-Doo, uh, 110 horse. And How many cylinders? Uh, it's twin cylinder. That much power on a twin? Yeah, it's an 800, 800 cc motor. And how long have you had it? Uh, I've had it for about three months now. So is this your first one? Yes. So this is all kind of new to you? Uh, well, my buddies all got them and I've been riding there, so kind of got hooked on it. And between that and the dirt bikes and quads we ride, we, we got into jet skis too. You know, you make a perfect point. Doesn't make any difference what kind of a motorsport show we do. I don't care if we go and do a show about airplanes or about boats or about motorcycles or snowmobiles. Typically, the guys have got a dirt bike laying in the corner or a wave runner laying in the back of the. You know what? We all like all this stuff. Sure. Oh, we ride them all. Okay, it's it's all fun. Is this the only place you ride? You go and place else? No, I go out to Laporte, and I've been down to Lake Schaefer, Indiana, and we also go up to Silver Lake, Michigan, up by Mears. So there's really no shortage of places to ride. Uh, not really. What do you like best? Uh, I like Lake Michigan when it's real choppy, but it's pretty smooth today. Now, I'm the kind of guy, when I take my boat out, quite frankly, I like it when it's like glass. So you guys, you're looking for waves. Oh, yeah. We find a boat out there, we chase him down and run his wake. Jump How about yourself, Liz? Are you ready to go jumping wakes? Yeah. I don't, Luda? Yes. You want a smooth water? Please. No, you no, want no, 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 I mean jumping. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> I think we have created a monster here. I'm not really sure. Anyhow, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Apparently, this is how much long are you going to be running? Oh, I'm going to be out here for a few hours yet. No, no, no. I mean, this is middle of October. How much more do you oh, go? Until it's too cold to come out. Now, you said earlier when I went to get you, you said that you were ready to take the wetsuit off that you're too warm. I'm way warm right now. I'm <laughs> ready to jump in the water and cool it's down. It's hard to believe they make that much of a difference. Yeah, they're, they're really put out some heat. Well, I'll tell you something. I, this is something we're going to have to investigate even further because I want to bring my audience information. This is a great way to extend not just the jet skis and wave runners, but the boating season in general would be with wetsuits. Sure, sure. Folks, we've got more folks to talk to here. Like I say, things are kind of heating up here, and it's turned out to be a wonderful day. And as always, we're running out of time. Let's hurry and check out a stand-up jet ski rider. <laughs> What a great day it is out here at Lake Michigan, and I'm really enjoying this water, by the way. Sir, what's your name? I'm Bob Petray. And where are you from? Palos Heights, Illinois. And can you tell us something about your jet ski? Uh, it's a Yamaha Superjet 98, pretty much stock. There's an intake crate, impeller, and ride plate. Okay, and this is a jet ski, not a wave runner. Maybe I can ride this too. Bill? <laughs> Okay, this we talked about it several times on the program today, and this is what makes it even more complicated than ever before. Kawasaki kind of invented all this stuff with the jet ski, which was the stand-up device, and this was maybe 10, 15 years ago, something like that. Kawasaki, well, the, I understand they've started remaking, but for several years, they went out of the jet ski business. They were only making the sit-down kinds. There were other companies, including Yamaha, and this one's a Yamaha. Chuck, show the audience. This one's a Yamaha. This one is not a Kawasaki jet ski, it is a Yamaha, and they call theirs super jets, but we all call them jet skis anyhow, don't we? Yep. Does this make any sense at all? Do you know what I'm trying to explain? I don't know what you're trying to explain. What, I, what I'm trying to explain to people is calling all of these things jet skis is not correct. That, that's true, that's a brand name, that's Kawasaki brand name. Exactly, even though everyone looking at yours would say you got a jet, jet ski. ski. Right. right. Okay, so I'm trying to help the public understand that jet ski was a Kawasaki brand name, but it has become, like Crescent Wrench, a generic name. Correct, synonymous so, with, synonymous for with, stand -up. All, with all watercraft. Yeah, and I think most, for people a little knowledgeable, for the stand-up watercraft. Right. And we call all the sit-down ones Wave Runners, even though that's a Yamaha, Yamaha. brand name. Right. Yeah, so, it's a, folks, I, I don't follow it exactly either, but anyhow, the stand-up ones require a real athlete. You've got to be in shape for this stuff. How long did it take you to, to learn how to do the stand-up? Half a summer. Uh, to do it well? 
a year. Okay, why would you want a stand-up one instead of the sit-down one? It's just more challenging, it's more fun, you're closer to the water. You do a lot more tricks with it. Okay, he's echoing things that I've heard before. You're exactly right. You can do more tricks. It's a lot more challenging, no question about it. However, let's say that you wanted to take off and go right over there to downtown Chicago, some 26 miles away. Could you do it with a stand-up one? You can do it. 26 miles? I wouldn't say I can do it, but you <laughs> Some can, human somebody can, can do, do it. it. Right. No, because you take a beating, right? Right, your back, your lower back especially. Lower back is what hurts the most, I think. All right, now do you have a sit-down one also? Nope, not anymore. Used to. Okay, but you, you like the stand-up ones that much better? Yes, I do. Okay, it probably gets down to what you actually do with it. Uh, typically, I'm guessing, because everybody here says you're the hot dog out on the beach no, here. I'm <laughs> so I'm, I'm guessing what you do is come out and play and do tricks and stuff. Try. Try to, try to do tricks. Right. So what I'm getting at is somebody that would want to have one of these personal watercraft devices for, say, oh, the chain of lakes to start maybe in the Fox River and go through the whole chain of lakes and con back to the, by the end of the day. They don't really want to stand up one for something like that, I would think. No, a more a sit-down. It's much easier. It's like, a, like a touring craft is what they, what they typically call them. Right. So the sit-down ones, the snowmobile style ones, I call them kind of snowmobile style. Those are more for people who are going to spend a number of hours on them all day long, yeah. use them more boat-like. And these are for somebody that's going to go out and play for, what, 20 minutes and come in and cough up blood? <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, and uh, what, do you have any other boats or any other motorsport devices, or is this it? This is it. This is this it. it. And you come out every weekend? Try to. Okay, you you go anyplace else other than here, or just here? Illinois River, early in the season. What part of the Illinois River? Uh, near Morris, Illinois. Sure, uh, William G. Stratton Park. We've been right. there many times. Everything's a wonderful facility there, too. And what I keep trying, one of the things we're trying to do on Motorsports Unlimited, Chuck, broaden your shot, show the audience this absolutely wonderful facility. I don't want to call it a facility because it seems so informal here, but it's a sort of a facility here. This is all available to people. All they have to do is come and use it. The same with Morris, William G. Stratton Park, the Illinois River. All they have to do is go and use it. I sometimes wonder what they're waiting for. I don't know. I mean, now the ramp isn't dug out, but during the season from Memorial Day to Labor Day, the ramp's dug out and it's much easier to put your craft in and out of the water over here. This is actually a little bit difficult now at the end of the season. Well, I don't know. I was watching you guys. You didn't seem to have trouble. Backed your cars and trailers up, threw them in the water, and then went and parked the cars and trailers. Yeah. But it's, it's, they're worried about the police. Right. Well, they're at, I'm surprised they're letting us. They usually don't. They really, yeah, because they've been kind of, I think they're watching because we're taping yeah. and they're kind of letting us go a little yeah. bit. Anyhow, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Folks, this is another way. Are you going to be able, can you give us some tricks? Is that asking too much? Can you do something like that? I can try. Well, everybody here says you do more than try, my friend. Yeah, You're, everybody tell he had no. Yeah, yeah, everybody says that, right? <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you what, we're going to roll tape on this fellow a little bit. Uh, as, he, uh, as he does something out here, I want to give you an idea of what you can do with the stand up units. We'll check out Bob in action in a few minutes, but first, Luda and Liz have a chance for one more ride because Paul got his watercraft running. Guess what? Our friend Paul, at the beginning of the day that we started with, our lone jet skier, and it turned out we ended up with Chuck. Show the audience. We've got a ton of jet skiers here now, but you had trouble getting yours started. We were going to give the girls a ride, and we got all of that done, but that doesn't mean they don't still want to ride because guess what? Liz, you really like this. I'm loving it. And you want to ride too? Me too. <laughs> Everybody wants to have a ride. What was wrong? Uh, it, it flooded. Oh, uh, flooded it? And the battery went down on it, so. And now it's going to run though? Yeah. Okay, we're going to go with these guys one at a time. Liz, you went first last time, so Luda, I think you're going to go first this time. So he's going to take you guys for a little ride. You're not going to get crazy or anything, no. right? Just going to give him a nice little loop out here and then come right back, pick up the other girl and take her for a little loop, okay? Right here, right Why not myself? No, 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 Luda, this is his. This is his. You go with him, go for a ride, okay? Okay. Okay, who's, who did I say was first? You're going to go first? Okay. Paul, this is Luda. Go ahead and take her with you. Okay. Liz, over here, help me narrate. You have really fallen in love with these things. I'm loving it. Yeah, no, these, these are great. This is great fun. And I'm going to tell you something. It's even greater fun when it's 95 degrees out in a hot summer. It's very, very cold. Actually, that would be more fun because then I could jump in, take a dive, come back. Absolutely. <laughs> this is summer fun, although I must admit these uh, um, wetsuits and everything apparently really extend the season. Yeah, they do. Um, I was pretty hot when I first put mine on. Seriously? Yeah. It, Even without the pants? Hot. I've been hot the whole time, but when I put it on, yeah, it was pretty warm in there. You noticed it being that much warmer? Yeah. Okay, and you had just what was called a shorty. That's yeah. uh, That only goes so far in it your was, legs. Um, right above the knees. Right, and so a long one is even going to be hotter. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Now, by the way, Chuck, while they're getting ready over there, take your camera shot right over here to the right, the jet ski. They've got the two little kids on it. Can you see it? We'll back up a little bit more, the two little girls. And we've got mom and dad that are right out there working with them in the water with the thing. And look, they're actually turning it. They're doing okay by themselves. 
That's pretty cool. Little kids like that. That's one of them yeah. six years old. Okay, now go back to Luna because it looks like we're, looks like she's ready to go. Yep, he's ready. There she goes. <laughs> now I don't know how to tell you guys this, but the guys were definitely better at this than you guys were. So? Yeah, you couldn't turn or anything. I would learn if I had it as long as they did. <laughs> I know. I'm only teasing you. I'm only teasing. Look at these two little girls. I can't believe it. That's pretty amazing. That is. That's very cool. And, and Dad and Mom are right there with them. And how old is she? Six years. The one just had her birthday. She's six years old. How about the one driving? Now the other one, I didn't get her age. I bet you now those are fast. Are. Listen, now those are modified. I, Chuck, I'm sure, isn't seeing those. A couple of guys just jumped on a couple of modified uh, uh, jet skis, and and they flew. And looks like Luda's coming back now. Back, yeah. And she's happy. She's waving. It's pretty hard not to enjoy this stuff. It really is. It's pretty hard. Yeah, I want one of my own now. <laughs> well, I gave you the chance this year of teaching how to water ski, and you didn't take me up on it. What? That's just as cool. And you never took <laughs> me up on it. Okay, now you go change place with Luda. Go. Bye-bye. <laughs> It's think? cool! <laughs> you really like this? Yes, only I like it driving myself. You want to be the driver? Mm -hmm. I have news for you. I was just telling Liz. What? You guys were not as good as the guys were. Why you say this? Because you couldn't steer? No. Yeah? No, it's not true. Yeah, it's true. Now there she goes. She's off. This turned out to be a beautiful day down here, didn't it? Yeah, it's a very nice day. Very beautiful place. Very nice lakes. Very warm water. Water's okay? You're not too cold? No, -uh, it's good. Wow, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. This is Lake Michigan. I'm always afraid Lake Michigan's too cold for me. I think Liz really likes this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she likes it. Yeah, <laughs> she likes it. She likes it. Well, I'm glad this guy got his uh, got his uh, jet ski or personal watercraft going here because he wants to have a day of the fun and sun. Next yeah, week, it yeah. might, next week it might be 30. You know? Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Maybe last day today. Maybe last day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That ride was a little wetter. That one was a little wetter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, Paul, come on in. That was fun, though. Pardon me? That was fun, though. No, these, these things are great fun. Paul, my friend. Thank you so much for being a good sport. I know at the beginning of the day, he didn't know quite what to make of us, but we're okay, aren't we? Yeah, it was great. Okay, well, you're a great sport. We thank you for your effort, and we thank everybody. This was wonderful down here today. It sure looked like it. I wish I'd been there. Let's take a final look at summer. Remember, this footage was shot nearly a decade ago. Before you go running off to find fun in the sun on Miller Beach, ask some questions and make sure things haven't changed. I could ride one, and it really looks like fun. Before we run out of time, let's take a moment to acknowledge the help of those who work to digitize and save this classic episode of Motorsports Unlimited. Mei Chin, Art Laushat, Samantha Bentley, and me, I'm Janine Laushat. 
Oh, by the way, if you try to check out Miller Beach, don't forget, we haven't been there for a long time. Ask questions first. I'm going to. Sad to see summer go, but we're looking forward to snowmobiling. Unfortunately, as always, we're out of time too soon with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler, Sue Cassanda, and John Papke. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music is created for us by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois, and by independent artists Roger Pauley and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Irina Cody, Nikki Castellanos, Don Caberlin, Liz Cozy, Luda Kay, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me, I'm Rodney Hood, looking forward to the winter season with the full knowledge that by the time we're tired of the cold, we'll be pulling the boats out again. Thanks for watching. See you next week. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade, held on Western Avenue in Chicago, the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, we're not done with Miller Beach yet. As a matter of fact, we did three great shows there, and I don't want to lose any of them, so I'm digging deep in the archives. I mean, after all, I've got to save the most important ones first, and as you can clearly see, this one is important. Check it out next week on Motorsports Unlimited. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.